So in this video, I'm going to talk about transcription, the first step in ultimately building a protein from the DNA code. So I just want to make sure again, I did this at the beginning of the replication video. I really want you to make sure that you keep DNA replication separate from this process of trying to read uh, DNA genes and ultimately build a protein. So now in these sets of videos, we're going to be talking about the second step. And again, the goal is to build a particular protein coded for by a certain DNA gene. So we're just going to read that one little section and copy it rather than copy the entire DNA code, which was what was involved in replication. Um, also, all cells all the time do gene expression. That's a very normal activity, um, wh whereas DNA replication was fairly um, specialized. It only occurred when you were trying to make a new cell. So you can kind of take this concept gene expression and you can kind of divide it into two steps, uh, RNA transcription, which we're going to talk about in this video, and RNA translation, which will be the next video. So here's kind of a very simple picture showing this process in a eukaryotic cell that has a nucleus around the DNA. We can see that in transcription, the DNA code is going to be copied, but maybe just a little section of it. And that's why the mRNA product looks a little smaller. So the DNA gene is going to be copied and a little RNA copy is going to be produced. And then in eukaryotes, in the next step, that RNA is going to leave the nucleus and go to the ribosomes that are in the cytoplasm. And maybe a little ribosome will read the RNA code and use that information to assemble the correct amino acids in the correct order to build a protein that would then have the correct shape. And so that's kind of the idea of translation. Um, yeah, prokaryotes also do these two processes. Uh, it's just that prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, so both transcription and translation would take place in the cytoplasm. Um, because these, both, these words both start with trans, sometimes it's easy to mix them up. Uh, the way I try to help students is to think of your root word. Script means writing, so we're just rewriting the nucleic acid code from one nucleic acid to another in this first step. And then we're really changing languages in the translation step. We're going to go from a nucleic acid language into a protein language uh, made of amino acids. All right, so let's go into transcription in detail in this video. You'll see that uh, maybe again, uh, if we call this whole uh, gigantic continuous piece of DNA a chromosome, we'll see that a gene might just be one little segment of that chromosome. Maybe this is one particular gene. Maybe there are hundreds or even maybe thousands of genes on chromosomes. Um, and so we're just gonna copy that one little segment. And so maybe a protein comes in and just sort of separates the DNA double helix in that little part. And then it can kind of glue the RNA nucleotides together. Notice that the RNA has U's instead of T's um, because it's an RNA, as I discussed in the last video. But this RNA still has A's, C's, and G's, um, and so it's making a copy. And so let's just kind of talk about the steps in case you want to uh, put this in your notes. Um, the steps would be to open up the code, just like we saw in replication. You have to access the nitrogen base code, and so you break the hydrogen bonds between the two DNA strands. Um, the RNAs know which, which strand to copy. Remember that RNAs are also single-stranded, so they're just going to copy one of the DNA strands. Um, but there are just free-floating RNA nucleotides floating around in your nucleus as well, and they'll pair up with the correct nitrogen base, and then a protein will come along and glue the sugar and phosphate backbone together. Uh, then the RNA copy can detach, and the DNA double helix can reform when its complementary strand comes back in and reforms those hydrogen bonds. And so what have we done? We've made a, an RNA copy, and we're going to call that messenger RNA. We'll see that there are lots of other RNAs involved later, so you kind of want to keep track of which RNA is which. So let's just do a little practice to finish up the video. Um, in our first step, we're going to uh, break the hydrogen bonds in between my two strands, and that will separate the two DNA strands. And now my RNA nucleotides can come in one at a time and pair up. Uh, RNA still has A to pair with DNA T, but it has a uracil instead of thymine to pair up with A, and it still has guanine and cytosine just like before. So maybe if it continues to copy in this direction, it would make this as the copy. 
and um, then it would detach and start to leave the nucleus and meanwhile the other DNA strand would come back in, um, reform um, uh, the double helix by reforming the hydrogen bonds again. And the other reason why I wanted to bring it back in is just to highlight, can you notice how the complementary DNA is very similar to the um, mRNA, except that there are T's in the DNA instead of U's in the RNA. Okay, so in this video, we just talked about the goal of transcription. We're just rewriting the code from one nucleic acid to another. RNA is a little different in that it has uracil instead of thymine, but it's still a nucleic acid code. And we'll see that the next step is for the mRNA to leave the nucleus, if you're talking about a eukaryote, uh, because it's gonna go out into the cytoplasm for the next step of translation.